Hi guys, Marion here. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing Stissel Season 3, my favorite Netflix show all about an Orthodox community in Israel. So I hope you guys like this video. If you do, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up to let me know. And of course, hit that red subscribe button on my channel to see more of my videos. I'm sorry I haven't been uploading as much as I usually do. I promise I have a really good reason for it and I'll be sharing that with you guys in some of the next videos. Okay, so let's jump into Shtisel. So Shtisel is one of my all-time favorite shows and I love how it portrays a Jewish community. It's a Jewish community that's very different to the one I'm part of, but there's still similarities and I just love it. I think I've reviewed a previous season. I definitely have talked about it before, so I'll link any videos that I have talked about it below. Um, but let's jump into season three because it was quite a season. What's so interesting about this season is that the first ones were filmed before um, the show went on Netflix and got this huge American audience and I'm sure a huge influx of more money. Oh, thank you. Corey, my little one, is just playing in the background. Mm -hmm. um, so I was expecting some changes, or I don't know, the, the show might feel a bit different. And I, th I think it did have some differences, but it stuck true to its schtissel core. So I thought for this season we could kind of go character by character and chat with you guys about how each of them, you know, fared this season. By the way, there will be tons of spoilers in this video, so if you haven't watched season three of Chisel yet, you should probably do that before watching this video. Okay, so let's start with, I've got my like list of characters here. Let's start with Libby. Poor Libby, <laughs> Kiva's wife originally. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened with Libby. Like, did her actual, um, the, did the actor who plays her, you know, need to move on to different things or whatever? But I was pretty surprised they killed her off. I mean, like, the whole thing with Giva finding her took so long. And there had been so many, um, I don't know, death is just such a huge, like, thematic element of this show. But there had been so much death in the first two seasons. And, of course, her death was totally out of nowhere. And they didn't really explain it. So I'm curious if they'll kind of get back to it at another point. Or they're just like, eh, we're done with this character we're gonna write her off but it felt a little strange because um for some another good thing you found for someone uh, so young to just suddenly die is strange so i kind of want to fault the show a little bit for at least not getting into that and for kind of it's like they skipped over um you know so much good stuff like we didn't get, oh, I love it. We didn't get to see, you know, Kiva and Libby's relationship that much because, you know, they got together at the end of season two and then season three starts, she's dead. So that was a little bit disappointing. But let's jump into Kiva's new wife, as the show does, um, Racheli. I love, love, love this character. I thought she was really good. I love that the show tackled mental health and I thought they did it in a really well done way. And they showed that her character was beautiful and yet she had a medical condition you know she was kind of flawed in that way but to me it didn't almost come off as a flaw it was like another element of her beauty and purity not purity <laughs> um, her like purity of soul I guess that she was so kind so kind hearted that she wanted to marry Kiva right away just to help save Devorah so I loved all of her scenes I loved their relationship I was totally cheering them on and anytime it kept like looking like things weren't gonna work out with them I was crushed I was really cheering for them and very happy that they got together in the end spoiler alert um, so I love that storyline I also love that Kiva fell for her it was a little weird again with the whole Libby thing like his wife had just died ish but um I was you know because she wasn't in the show at all season three I was like yeah move on Racheli let's do this um I thought Racheli was so beautiful I loved her apartment I loved I don't know I loved everything about her I wanted to see her interact more with Devorala the baby I thought that would have been cute and kind of you know because the whole point was that she was going to be this mother but we never really saw that so much Anyways, I give her character 10 out of 10. Loved her. Speaking of strong female leads, let's jump into my absolute favorite, and that is Gitty. Team Gitty all the way. I love Gitty. I love her relationship with Lippy, her husband. She is a strong, 
badass female. What'd you find? Um, <laughs> I love Gitty. Every time she talked, I was just like, yes, yes. Not that she necessarily was correct every time. You know, she had this like troubling relationship with her son trying to find a match and like, you know, the whole like, well, what side should she really be on? And you know, how much as a mother should she get involved? And there's so much complicated stuff there. And also like, you know, shooting down her husband's dreams or whatever. So I'm not saying that everything she said was right, but I loved her passion. And I loved how she like got every situation under control. She was like such a boss. And I love, love Gitty. And moving on to more females I love, Ruhami. Uh, so Shira Haas, who plays Ruhami, we all knew would be a big feature of this season because she had just come off her role in Unorthodox, where she gained huge publicity and, well, you know, so much acclaim for that role. And she had been great. She had been amazing in Schissel before. She was always one of my favorite characters and a lot of people's favorite characters. But I had a feeling her storyline would be pretty big in season three, given how famous she had become. Um, so so let's talk about it. I was a little, I love it. I was a little weirded out by this storyline. Okay. I was, let's say good pros and cons. I was happy that they tackled elements of infertility and loss. I also love that they showcased um, late trimester loss, abortion, all of these topics from a Jewish lens and showed um, Judaism's Ooh. true views on those topics. I love it. Oh. Um, which was amazing to see. If you guys, I thought it was really interesting how the rabbi immediately showed that the life of the mother of the woman comes first and all of those really interesting, fascinating aspects. <laughs> so I was very I'm proud and just excited for them to showcase those topics in that way and I thought they did well with them. The things I kind of was a little like hmm about and I'm not a doctor but some of the medical stuff I was like what does she have like you know it just it was all kind of surprising and then at the end I was like is she dead because I don't know if I'm the only one who thought this but so in that last scene, Kiva and the uncle, Uncle Nuchum and um, Shulam are sitting at the table and they bring back all these people who have passed away. I love that shampoo. Um, and you kind of see all these old characters there and people you haven't met, but you kind of guess who they are. This is like big family setting. And then they cut right to Ruhami who seemed to be on the verge of death last time we saw her, but totally fine with her baby. So part of me was like, wait, was that kind of a dream sequence, which they do a lot, especially with people who have passed away in the show. Um, so I'm curious. Also, I wouldn't be surprised if Shira Haas has many other projects to get to and won't continue with the series. So that's just my little question mark. Let me know, did anybody else think that about the last scene? I mean, I don't want her to be killed off. I love those cute dips by any means, but I was just a little kind of curious. Also the way she like smiled at the camera. But let's say that they did keep her alive and the scene was, you know, just straight. Then here's my question. Moments before she's like a losing blood, she's out of it, everything's gone. And then a second later, there she is holding her baby. And I feel like that sets an unrealistic expectation for what traumatic birth is like. I think it's important that we, um, you know, take note as a society of how pregnancy and birth is portrayed in film and media. And this is like a huge sticking point for me. Every single time they show morning sickness on TV, they always show the character throwing up one time, like out of nowhere, she's just doing her day and then decides to throw up and then everything's fine. So like Ruhami's delivering papers at 5 a.m. <laughs> I'd like to meet one pregnant woman that can deliver newspapers at 5 a.m. in their first trimester, but I digress. So I just feel like sometimes they show pregnancy in a really unrealistic way. Um, the fact that like she could hide her whole first trimester, but it just, you know, randomly threw up one time. Anyways, and then at the end, like anyone who would be having like the, that crazy surgery or whatever would be going on, I just doubt would be sitting up smiling with a room full of people, you know, five minutes later. I don't know why I get so hung up on this, but I just really care about women's health and how it's portrayed so that women don't have unrealistic expectations and society doesn't have unrealistic expectations of new mothers. So yeah, a little bit of a sticking point for me on that one. Okay, who else should I get into? Let's talk about the men. Ugh. 
the men in this show. Kiva, I don't know. I don't know what to say about him. I feel like he's just a... Uh, a lot of the men in this show to me are just like side characters to the women's stories, if that makes sense. That's how I see them. I thought Kiva was fine. Like he didn't he didn't annoy me in this show a little bit. I want him to like come on, kiss Racheli. Like let's do this. Um, but he, he didn't upset me too much. It bothered me when he, you know, was like sitting and drinking with his friends and like, I was just like, come on, get it together and like buying back his paintings, you know, and like, that's how a lot of the men in this show are, is like, they just kind of frustrate you. You're like, come on, come on, Corey, you want to say hi? No. No? <laughs> Corey's got my, um, like toothpicks that he's picking out. Anyway, so yeah, he just, I don't have much to say about him. He just kind of like, lived his life he wasn't very like he wasn't an active you know i don't know he did good i like that he was taking care of dvorla and that he got it together with raheli let's talk about shulam oh shulam 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 oh my goodness is there a more annoying character on tv i don't think so i was so happy that he ultimately sort of got raheli and kiva together in the moments where they paused and that he was determined to save dvorla that was huge. And so he did good. But then he messed up, he tried to mess up Kiva's relationship. He messed up his brother's relationship, the whole thing with the school. Like he always has these awkward breakdowns in public. Just, uh, just so much secondhand awkwardness watching him fumble around. But ultimately it wasn't as bad as he was in previous seasons. Um, let's just take a moment though. I forgot to talk about, uh, child welfare in this show. I obviously don't know what it's like in Israel, um, but I <laughs> I was just like, is this really how it is? Like the wrong, you send someone to pick up your kid, the daycare gives him the wrong kid. Okay, that's the daycare's fault. Can we just all say that? It's not Kiva's fault. Like if anything, it's the guy who picked him up. Like, yeah, he wasn't great. And then the daycare handed him the wrong kid. Yeah. And suddenly Kiva's getting his daughter taken away. It just seemed extreme to me. So um, yeah, I just wanted to throw that in there. Another little critique. Okay, and the other big male feature of the show was Hanina Ruhami's husband. And oh, and Yosela, um, who was, you know, looking for a match. His story was fine, whatever. Just didn't, it didn't get me one way or the other. Hanina was like such a strange character in the earlier seasons. And I kind of just wanted to know more about him. Like, what is his backstory? Why is he such an odd, odd ball? Um, he seemed to have like kind of made a 180 in season three. He was this like loving husband who, you know, fit in well with Ruhami's family and got along well with her parents and they seem to have made strides as a young couple. So I don't know, I guess I was surprised that they kind of normalized him so much. Like he was so out there in um, season two that I was just kind of wanted more from him. So yeah, that's my wrap up of season three. Strong opinions here. I just love the show. I enjoyed watching it. I found it very, very dark this year. I mean, it always is dark, but kind of more depressing and sad, but ultimately it ended well and ended on a happy note, which I appreciated. And it was overall an amazing binge, an amazing binge watch. So that's it, that's my wrap up. Hope you guys liked it. If you did, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and definitely follow me on Instagram because I'm constantly talking about what I'm watching, what I'm doing, and I'd love to chat with you guys there. And of course, let me know in the comments what you guys thought of Schissel season three, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.